Welcome back to the Supercoach Nuff channel. In this video, we're looking at the round 15 review for NRL Fantasy in the 2024 season. Uh, and I guess a bit of a backwards week for us with our 738 um, dropping uh, a couple of thousand spots overall. I think we were 12-2 yeah, and now we're 13-8. So what's that? One and a half thousand, 1,600 maybe, something like that. Um, but I guess, you know, it didn't help our, our captain was late out, um, and a couple other sort of, uh, low scores, you know, we did sort of risk that, uh, we could hang on a week and, and then make some trades, but, um, we probably could have done a couple moves a bit earlier, but that's okay. You live and you learn. <laughs> so Harry Grant, uh, was a 41 this week, so a little bit underwhelming, but again, you know, it's origin time. He's, he's a bit distracted. It's fine. Uh, Fenella Black with a 49, solid. Xavier Wilson with 37 is decent. Um, you know, he's not playing this week, but that's fine. Uh, Max Plath with a 53 is a good return from him as well. So, you know, it's solid, but not spectacular. Uh, our second round, we had Sean Bloor with a 37. You know, he's ticking along. But uh, Fafita was our captain, and he was uh, laid out with an ankle injury. So uh, we, we did cop uh, Dylan Edwards' score, which wasn't the worst, actually, as it turned out. Um, K Weeks, 33, it's probably about his lowest score for the year. If we have a look, uh, fixtures, so 42, 50, yeah, so easily his lowest score, but uh, he's playing the next couple of weeks, so we'll keep him in the team. Uh, Brendan Hands with a 43 on the bye this week, um, so, you know, we'll try and hold him to make some more money for us. Kale Eero, uh, 50. So, you know, nice sort of score going into the buy. Um, he will cover around 19, so he may be worth holding, but uh, we'll just have to see how we're going for numbers. You and Aitken with a 46, so a bit down on what we've been getting from him, but uh, he's our keeper in the centres, so we're not stressed. Uh, Dylan Edwards was our captain with a 58, so nice, uh, I guess, VC, I should say, but uh, end up being our captain score, so... We'll take that every day of the week. Uh, Scott Drinkwater with 53 was good, but uh, I guess on the bye this week and also doesn't play around 19. Uh, Hopawati, so all really good for more reports. You know, 62, um, making some good money. He'll definitely score us some points this week. On the bye next week, though, around 17. So we do have to be mindful of that with our trades. Uh, on the bench, Jaden Braley with the 37 is solid. Um, Tyron Wishart, 41, is good. You know, he's doing his job. Finney Fuiaki with 12. is obviously going to be tough coming off the bench. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's going to be on the chopping block this week. And uh, Blaze Talangi with a 28. So probably one we can consider looking at moving on this week potentially as well. You know, him and Euro are very much in the same boat. Uh, then we had uh, Hughes, Carr, and Kiraz all on the bike. Galvin missed out with the hand injury, but uh, early report from NRL.com is that he he's due back this week. So I think we all consider him as an in for the time being. Um, actually, before I get into the team, should have a look at the head-to-head -head matchup. Uh, so there was no fixtures this week. That's fine. But last week... You know, we had a good win over Punch him in the throat. So I don't know if we can condone that, but uh, if that's what your team's called, Leon, that's fine. <laughs> so he had Marshall King, so slightly outpointed there. But uh, current, so I'd see why Wong. So I don't know, thinking like this might be a bit of a dead team. Pappenhaus and Ponga, yeah, probably someone who's not paying the most attention. Although he's got some good bench covers with, you know, Fainu, gay guys been playing. So interesting. Maybe just, you know, been out of action for the last couple of weeks. That's fine. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Um, so if we go back, we'll see if we can find the uh, the top scorer this week. So 8.59 from Weppo's winners is going to be pretty hard to beat, I would have thought. 
Uh, and I thought wrong, 891, best ping across the land. So let's let's have a look at both of them. Why not? Got the time. So Wepo's got uh, Reese Robson, 54, Paddy Carrigan, uh, Tohu Harris, he'll be useful this week. Uh, Scott Sorensen, Kalon Matangi, he's been good, 53. Might even come into my calculations this week. Um, you know, dual position, scoring well. Souths are back in form. Be interesting to see how they go without Latrell this week, but I think they'll be okay. Uh, Hughes with a 58 was a good return. Um, had Ruben Garrick, which is a bit flat, so this could have been even better. Um, had uh, Latrell as the vice captain, so 59, good score there to get captain on. And had Fei Lungo, and probably would have got uh, Fainu as well, probably subbed in for Fafita. Um, and then hands in for Galvin. So, you know, really solid bench as well, which helped. So other than Garrick, didn't really miss with anyone. You know, Weeks was a bit underwhelming, but that's fine. So, yeah, just solid all round. Well done, Wesley. Uh, and the best ping out across the land, though, with an 891. So, Cam McInnes with a 29 was disappointing, but Payne Haas with an 82. Nice. Love to see it. Dylan Brown with a 50. Oh, he has Isaiah Yo as well. So, uh, a bit tough to cover the mids this week, but I guess, you know, that's how you play. Had uh, Hamaso as vice captain, so got uh, 52 doubled up. Teddy with the 61. Damien Cook, 69 on the bench. Um, just having a look. So probably would have just had to cover for feeder. So Nanai would have come on and Karapani with a 40 would have come in. So that's worked out pretty well. Solid bench. Sharp was good. I think he's one I'll definitely have to bring in next week. Um, yeah, so what's he at? Uh, 328, that's not the worst, but could have got him 100k cheaper, I suppose. But uh, money's not really an issue at the moment. <laughs> so speaking of which, let's see if we can uh, spend a bit of it. Uh, start by just getting who we've got on board. So Kira's in... Karen in. See him here's on standby if need be. So, got. So, I think Fafita should be right to play. I think Karen comes back from his head knock. So, it just looks like we're struggling at uh, wing fullback. We don't have any other. I guess we could uh, do this swing Hughes into the middle. Plath into the, the halves and, and wish out all weeks could go back. So, I mean, we, we do have a situation where we could, uh, you know, bring in a half or a wing fullback this week or a centre um, with uh, Kiro's being able to cover there as well. So, we can, in theory, get 13 with just one trade, which is nice. So... Oh, actually, we've got Galvin as well, I think. So, let's swap him around. So, we actually do have 13 already, which is pretty handy. If we don't have to trade this week, I don't know if I will. Um, you know, Braley's got good coverage. Here. Well, actually, I do have to get rid of Fini Fibiaki, don't I? Um, do I have to get rid of Talangi? Mm, don't know. But we can definitely get out of uh, Finny Fubiaki this week. Trade. Um, that's just a question of, you know, we can bring in anyone we want. We've got 1.3 mil in the bank. But I guess, you know, we do want a keeper. So Hines, Haas, Yo, Carrigan all on the buy. The trail's playing Origin. Jerome Hughes, perhaps. Um, but... You know, I think we're going to want to get Hines and Cleary back in the halves. So, you know, I think that's a trade in, trade out. In saying that, I am tempted by Johnson. He dropped a whole heap of cash, uh, 82k this week. Still has a big break even based on that. But uh, for some reason, yeah, just SJ speaks to me a little bit louder than um, Trump. He's might be there playing the 
Titans and the Storm are playing the Dolphins this week. Eli Katoa probably doesn't fit the brief. We do want someone in the back line. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I guess the other option that uh, is available this week, won't be available around 19 either, uh, but it's the same for those other two, is Tedesco. You know, he's a little bit elevated in price, but uh, could be worth a look. Kalama Matangi, as we said, is good cover in the, uh, the forwards there. So actually, I just realised, because we've got 13, it doesn't matter what position we get, hey, we could get a forward. Just about, it's about who we want to keep for the rest of the season. So next week, uh, we've got Fafita. Um, Hopper Whitey's going to miss. So, yeah, we could bring in, you know, like a Kalamatangi. The one I was potentially interested in was Whiten um, as, a, as a sneaky sort of half option. Jaden Campbell's an interesting one, playing in the front line at 5 8 so there's definitely some interesting options this week. Definitely one to have a worthwhile explore. Um, although I just realised Harry Grant's still in the team, so we do need a hooker. <laughs> I've just completely overlooked that. So I guess in that case, if we go to hookers, I, I, you know what the answer is, um, but that's fine. <laughs> well, actually, I guess there's a couple of answers. Option one, read Marnie. Uh, you know, it doesn't play round 19, um, so overlook. So it's really down to Marshall King and Coruscant. And both scored a 44 on the weekend. Um, so, I mean, it's it's take your pick. I'm pretty lucky. I've only got two Dolphins, so I can take Marshall King and cover round 18. Um, there is something that's just saying go with the uh, Appy, though. 44. Although he was playing in the halves this week, wasn't he? Or did that end up happening? I don't really know. I didn't watch the game, if I'm being honest. 29 tackles. So it looks like he was a bit further out on the edge. 10 missed. That's a bit yuck. We don't rate that. Kick meters was good, though. Uh, so ran the ball a bit, too, which is nice. So, uh, let's have a closer look at Marshall King as the alternative option. So, um, fixtures. So, 44 on the weekend, match stats, that's what I actually wanted. So, played 80 minutes, 37. So, you can see a few less missed tackles. There was a few against Tigers the other week, but um, just some more solid base. Now, obviously, the uh, kick meters aren't there. So, yeah, it's much of a muchness. Could There is a world where we could bring them both in, but, I mean, we've got Braley as well, who'll cover around 19. Uh, hands will cover around 19 at the moment. So, I mean, we don't have to go crazy. Um... Let's see. So, yeah, season average. So... You know, I guess when we look at the season average, Marshall King's about five points ahead, which probably makes sense. So maybe we just do that. One trade, which is a lot better than what I thought I was going to have to do. I don't know how I calculated that last week, but that's fine. So just have another look through. I think everyone's good to go this week. As I said, I'm expecting current for feeder Galvin all back in. Obviously, if they're not, we could uh, trade. Um, and I think, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be these guys. It would be um, a Talangi, Eero, Drinkwater all on the chopping block. Um, you know, but we've still got 700k, so it doesn't really matter. On, on the money, it could be Talangi at the lower price. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, there, there is plenty of great options. As I said, we'll do the, the tops, chops, trap slaps this week. We'll do the round preview. But at the moment, if I can get away with just doing that, I think I'll be pretty happy. 
Um, we'd have to have a look at the um, the buy planner to uh, to work out what we're doing for round 19. But I mean, if we can save the six trades, well, you know, definitely got four we could cash, and then I'm gonna end up give us what's that two plus the eight coming up, ten trades to uh, to you know get rid of the the deadwood, i.e. Sam Hughes, you know, upgrade our halves. You know, bring in, you know, we've got Haas, Cleary, Hines, Yo, all in the sites to come in. So, you know, they're the sort of players we're looking to, to draft into the squad going forward. All right, so I'll leave it there. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, please feel free to uh, add them in. It's always great to interact with the... The, uh, the people there in YouTube land. Uh, give us a like if you enjoy the NRL fantasy stuff. Subscribe for all the fantasy sports content. And other than that, we'll catch you in the next one.